Hey there, clarinetophiles and clarifiolets across the Fruity Plains. We have an astute and faithful viewer who has decided to assume the position of interlocutor and field me a query. Uh, or, if that's not clear, he's, somebody's got a question. Okay. Anyway, here's the question. And this is, um, uh, the subject is a clara nerd question. Okay. Uh, this could be for non clara nerds too, anyway. He says, uh, so he or she says, uh, so this is in response to Tom's request on his webinars for requests. I'm not clear on that, but anyway, he goes on, he says, I'm not yet an owner of a ridden out clarinet. Unfortunate soul. But the clarinets I play all have a particular problem. Well, for one thing, they're not ridden out clarinets. Uh, anyway, uh, the low A, that is the A below the staff, is so sharp, exclamation mark. How come? What can I do to fix this? I have name brand clarinets from 1960 through 1995 that all exhibit this phenomenon. The odd thing is that the E, that is the clarion E that comes out of the same tone hole, uh, isn't sharp. It's well in tune. If I use a softer reed, the A goes even sharper. Well, don't do that. Anyway, he says, how come this happens? And what can I do to fix it? If you'd like to know, stay tuned. So, this is quite a problem our interlocutor has uh, gotten his or herself into. Um, let me finish the note here. He says, being that Tom is a master clarinet designer, I'll bet he probably knows the reason this problem exists. You know, I actually do. And could advise us on what to do to make the problem better. Um, lipping that one note it down is a pita, P-I-T-A. I don't know what a pita is. He says, this is a non-Texan term for thin-skinned Texans. That, that thin skin Texans may find offensive, so I do apologize. You know, we almost find nothing offensive down here except people trying to take our rights away. Um, I live near New Haven, Connecticut, in a town you may have heard of called New York City. Yeah, um, I, I have. Well, it seems like our interlocutor uh, from that little town south of New Haven has quite a problem and uh, has some pretty good questions here. Uh, first of all, um, can this be corrected? Well, I'll give you the bad news first. No, there is no correction for the problem when you have a sharp low A and an in tune clarion uh, E, the note that comes out of the same tone hole as the low A. The reason being that when twelfths are out of tune or twelfths move in opposite directions, then you can only perfect one by making the other worse. For instance, if the low A is sharp, the only way you could fix it is by adding material to the tone hole to bring the low A down. But by then, your in tune E is going to be extremely flat. Let's say they were moving in opposite directions. Let's say the low A um, was flat and the clarion E was sharp. Well, then you want to bring the clarion E down, so you add material to the tone hole to bring it down, but you make the A even flatter. So when, when uh, notes are out of tune, when we call that detuning, when notes are detuned in opposite directions, there's really no fix. And the problem is not uh, one that a repair tech can fix uh, just with padding and a few adjustments, because it's usually baked in the cake acoustically. Uh, in the case of a sharp right-hand low register note, like a sharp low A, it's usually because the bore of the clarinet in the right hand, the central cylinder, is too large. Now, small bore clarinets tune better. A 14.6 millimeter bore clarinet is going to give you much better twelfths. 
Now, what happens as you reduce the central cylinder of the clarinet, say from 14.8, 14.85, down to 14.65, uh, certainly below 14.7, is that those sharp right-hand pitches begin to stretch and to get lower and lower in relationship to the clarion pitches. This is good news because it's bringing them in better tune. Uh, now, if you get down to 14.65 or 14.62, what's going to happen is the low register notes, for instance, like a low A and a low B flat, they're actually going to get flat in relationship to the clarion notes. So you'll have a flat low B flat in relationship to, say, a clarion F, or a flat low A in relationship to clarion E. Well, that's no good. Um, so, uh, I mean, playing out of tune flat is probably worse for most people than playing out of tune sharp. So how do you fix that? Well, the way you fix that is then you take undercutters and you flare the tone holes uh, that of the flat low notes so that you increase that flare. And what that does is it gradually raises the tuning of the low note so that you can, can basically feather it in and bring it in so that you can fine tune the 12th. So finally, the A, the low A is brought up. And as you undercut, to raise the low A, it doesn't affect the tuning of the E. So the E remains well in tune. And then you fine tune that low A and, and they're beautifully in tune. But again, a larger bore clarinet is going to push that low A up quite sharp in relationship to the clarion E, and there's no fix for it. There's no, there's no way you can correct this. And this brings me to making a, a little historical point that most clarinet players played large bore clarinets before 1950 because generally they liked to the sound better. But the fact is, is that uh, large bore clarinets don't tune as well as small bore clarinets. And as soon as we figured out how to make small bore clarinets that had good depth of sound, then clarinet players switched to it in droves. You know, many people I worked with um, when I was at LeBlanc Many people I worked with, they thought that uh, small bore or large bore was just a fad and that eventually that things would shift back so that eventually people would be playing large bore clarinets again rather than small bore clarinets. But this is simply not true. Uh, switch to small bore clarinets is one um, that is here to stay because small bore clarinets will give you better, truer twelfths and a clarinet will play much better in tune with itself than you can ever get a large bore clarinet or a larger bore clarinet to play in tune with itself. Basically anything above 14.7 millimeters is going to begin to present problems with especially the right hand, uh, uh, the right hand tuning ratios, the low A to clarion E, B flat to F. So uh, smaller bore clarinets, then again, don't guarantee that you're going to have good twelfths in the right hand. Uh, they really have their own problems. But even if you have a, a good small bore clarinet and the bore is really held down to good dimensions, the notes down there can be over undercut and drive the note sharp. Well, at least you can sort of correct undercutting with the modern materials that we have today. But the ideal thing is to produce the clarinet correctly in the first place. So, um, anyway, uh, I wish I had better news for our, our questioner here, uh, but I don't. Um, then the only thing I can recommend is simply that uh, to buy a newer clarinet uh, that's made with uh, stricter tuning standards uh, and made more carefully. Um, for instance, our 570, and you don't have to spend a million dollars to do it. it it's, in fact, a lot of very high-priced clarinets have, you know, serious tuning problems. Our 576 clarinet is not expensive, and uh, its tuning is spectacular. The twelfths are beautiful, very carefully made, uh, and dimensions extremely consistent. So don't think that you're going to have to basically mortgage your home to get a clarinet that plays well in tune. It's just not necessary. Uh, but you do have to have knowledge, and you do have to learn how to test properly, and that will ensure that you'll get a better clarinet. And that's what I recommend for you and for our questioner today. Thanks for watching.